in these stem cells, they're not being expanded at all. Is that correct? You're no, just literally no. collecting. Yeah. So these are young, healthy mothers doing mm -hmm. cesarean section, right? So yes. everything is going through the sterile field. And mm -hmm. once the cord is cut and the cord and the placenta is put in a saline bag on ice and overnight shipped to the lab, the lab will process it. The stem cell space, the bone marrow and fat-derived stem cells came first, especially bone marrow has been around for a very long time. So then umbilical cord mm -hmm. came later, and the first group was umbilical cord blood. So basically the cord, right, contained <laughs> ar arteries and veins. Arteries. You can squeeze the, the blood out of it, and the umbilical cord blood composition is very similar to the bone marrow composition. Um, so it's full of primitive immune cells, some mm -hmm. hematopoietic progenitor cells, which can go ahead and form all the blood lines and have a very small amount of mesenchymal stem cells, which is the most famous right now, what everybody's going after, yep. and but very tiny amount. Same as the bone marrow. The bone marrow has 0.1 to 0.01% of all the cells are mesenchymal stem mm -hmm. cells. That's the core blood has very, very tiny amount, but yeah. very tiny. And the core blood cells will be very similar to what's inside the baby, right? They're kind of circulating back and forth and back and forth. The core blood also contains some endothelial progenitor cells and it has its own property. And then later on, people realize, oh, in the umbilical cord tissue, within the tissue itself, so all the things that's wrapping around the cord, uh, right, yeah. tissue mm -hmm. full of mesenchymal stem cells. And these mesenchymal mm -hmm. stem cells are actually- It's the water, water, water jelly. Water jelly, right. The, the bulk of this yeah. water jelly. These stem cells mm -hmm. actually are more primitive than the core blood MSC. So the MSCs from the court, from the Wharton's jelly is more primitive because they were trapped while the baby was forming, you know, with the cord was forming, okay. so that is actually more primitive. So it's a little different from the MSCs in the core blood. So it has different orientation of how they want to differentiate, you know, what kind of cells they can become. So that's a core tissue. And then you've got amniotic membrane, all the membrane that's wrapping around the cord. That also can be very helpful. And there are some labs only produce products out of the amniotic membrane. And right. that can be a lot of MSCs also, but they also have a different, you know, potential to, to develop into different tissue cells. So gotcha. what I did was that I put all three together from the same donor because right. I've seen benefits from each source on their own. And I know they're all a little different. So why don't gotcha. I put all the therapeutic components together, knowing that they have slightly different orientation. So that's yeah. kind of what I'm doing, why it's so different from what everybody uh, everybody else is doing. Okay, so basically it's a combination of all. Um, and when when these stem cells, okay, so they're being they're being combined elsewhere, you're they're not being expanded at all. Is that correct? You're no, just literally no. collecting them. Yeah. So okay. once the tissue, and by the way, we only accept unvaccinated donors. So we don't yep. accept mothers who have been vaccinated by COVID. Right. Vaccines. Okay. Um, it's just introducing too many unknown factors. Um, so mm -hmm. you know, we can go down a rabbit hole with that one. But but basically, okay. we're avoiding that particular problem. So, okay. so these are young, healthy mothers doing mm -hmm. cesarean section, right? So yes. everything is going through the sterile field. And mm -hmm. once the cord is cut... And cord and the placenta is put in a saline bag, normal saline bag, mm -hmm. on ice, and overnight shipped to the lab. The lab will process it, and they will use mechanical gotcha. methods to carefully separate the cells out. And okay. once uh, once the cells are freed, that's when they will start to lower the temperature very methodically, about, about one degree per minute. So gradually, gradually, these cells will freeze right, freeze. animation, right? So so they just, they stop their metabolic activity. Um, mm -hmm. So they be, can be kept in that state for, for decades. So what we do is that oh, wow. we thaw them out by the time it's ready to use. And then, mm -hmm. get the so there's no expansion process. The stem cells have been um, harvested and 
is that clinic nearby or is it, does it get shipped to you what what how does it how does the process come from that clinic to you like is it well, staying a, in the from, not from a clinic it's from a tissue bank so tissue bank sorry yeah sorry, the tissue, tissue bank, bank yeah. will ship everything to me on dry mm-hmm. ice yeah, okay. so that gotcha. kept the temperature at minus, you know, 79.5 degrees. And yep. that's when, um, yeah, the cells kept, it's kept very well. So it's overnight shipped to us and then we okay. can give it to patients. Yeah. Okay. So it's right. continued to be frozen and it's, and we use a water bath, you know, it's only after we've gotten the IV access established, we're ready to get, get the cells. So I will thaw them out very rapidly because you're avoiding the stage where the crystals can form. So you want rapid thawing. And then once we get it, I activate it with red light to give them more energy to help their viability. And then we put in the IV bag and give it to you. Right. Okay. Wow. Sounds like sounds like you're a chef. <laughs> <laughs> we do yeah. the same thing with food. We do the same thing with food. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't cry a freeze, but but uh, you know it's uh, interesting how you actually. Water bath I've um, I treated a ra- restaurant tour, um, and he was saying, yeah, it's very similar to how we deal with uh, with meat because if you do it too rapidly, then it dries out and it, right, you lose the moisture, and then you get you know dry and you know not very good <laughs> good meat. That's anymore. exactly right. That's- that's yeah. exactly right. So, yeah. so that's what I was referring to. So yeah, it's the same, a similar process. I mean, obviously it's not the same, but um, but uh, yeah, okay. I would really like to see whatever study I could in terms of the efficacy. I know you've, you've talked about it a little bit about, I'm not sure how many um, uh, stem cells you'd recommend for me, but I know that in one of your podcasts, you were talking about, you know, you know, 100 million stem cells is only worth, is, is only worth 10, 10 million of mine. For example, mm-hmm. I think yeah, you know, something yeah. similar to that. Yeah, well, that's um, the so, study I saw at the, the the conference, the the stem cell conference, where yep. um, you know a research lab did the study, looking at what happens when you expand the cells and look at how active they are, how therapeutic they are, and so yep. what they found out is that when you start to expand the cells at ten times the number of cells, as you know, as un, unexpanded native cells. You actually lose potency. So if you're giving you, you're giving ten times more, and you have less effect. So, right. so that that was what was you know what was quite a moment for me realizing that um, you know more is not better. Yeah.